talking to people like Ivy Tech, people like Vincent University, uh, and, uh, are trying to promote that type of thing. Uh, you get pushback from the, big, the major four-year universities push back on that because they've been, you know, they, and that's not, that's, it's just the nature of the beast. Does the AMA decide who's accredited? The AMA does not. The AMA is an organization. Uh, on the doctor side, it's a national board, it's called the National Board of Medical Examiners. And you have to get through, if you're a physician in medical school, you take boards part one, boards part two, and then in your first year of practice, you pay, take boards part three. You have to pass all three of those, unless they've changed it, to get your medical license. So that they're a national board of medical examiners. They're like like the state board of nursing or something like that. They're, they're a national board that specifically uh, 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 licenses physicians. Who controls them? It's an organization. It's an independent organization that, yeah, AMA is like a, the AMA is like a group that you can join of, of doctors, but they don't, they don't have anything to do with the, with licensing of doctors. Or, or, and then each specialty has its own board. Like, I'm in thoracic surgery, so we have the American Board of Thoracic Surgery. It's, just, it's an independent organization that's charge is to certify, board certify, thoracic surgeons. And I was a board certified surgeon because I passed the, their test. And then most hospitals uh, and now, and I don't know if your facility or other, most hospitals, you can come on board if you have a license to practice medicine. But a lot of hospitals are saying, within five years, we want you to have board certification. And they're relying on these specialty boards to do that, and it's pretty effective. But that, that said, nobody knows who's good and bad and let, except the people working around it, because you can say anything else, you can have board certified physicians, licensed nurses, licensed physicians. It's like every other walk of life. It's a bell curve. Most people are really good. You got some people that are not so good. So the, the people who run the medical school at IU, who are saying it's a requirement that you have to have a bachelor's degree to get into medical school. Yes. They're the ones who are in control of saying this is a previous requirement. Yes. They have a vested interest in having kids in college longer. <laughs> That's a skeptical viewpoint. But I, <laughs> I, I am so skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <laughs> disagree. <laughs> no, but I think schools are going. Your point is well taken. There are like, I think if you look it up on the internet, so I looked at this for my son recently, the reason I know. He's now at Emory University. But he's not going into medicine probably for the reasons that we just talked about. He's a bright kid. Both his parents are doctors. My wife's a doctor, anesthesiologist. And he's like, I'm going into business. I want to be an entrepreneur, open my own business. He's like, he's seen it. So he thinks that's going to let him sleep at night? No. Okay. No, he doesn't. But he also knows it's not going to take him 15 years before he does his first surgery, which it did me. Eight years. Of Four years of undergraduate, four years of medical school, five years of general surgery residency, and two years of cardiothoracic surgery fellowship training. The, before I before I did my first surgery, I was 33 years old. By yourself? Right. Yes. I hope you did surgery. By myself. <laughs> By myself, as yeah. the attending physician, as the doctor that is the attending physician. Yeah. Well, I, I, I agree, but then on the back end, you got to convince young people. Is it financially feasible to do that? Today, they say no. My son's like, you know what? I could probably get an undergraduate degree, get in my MBA, or even go to law school for three years and be in business. And I'm going to start earning money when I'm in my mid, mid 20s. Still has to do something. Yeah, but you get a job. You, you know, if you're bright, you, you get a job at a business, you, can, you know, you start your own business. It's tough. But the point is, is he can start. He's got he's got control of his own. He doesn't have as much debt. He's got control of his own. You know, life. he's he. Uh, uh, you know, he doesn't. Uh, he just does, doesn't have to have that much debt. He's got training and and then with all the things, the hoops that everybody has to jump through these days, and with uh, 
no tort reform, so you're getting, you know, all physicians get sued, even though you're doing your best. Uh, it's just not worth it for young people.